Seattle is a city surrounded by water. shores of Puget Sound to the west and Lake Washington to the east. It's a city set between mountains, the Cascade Range on the eastern horizon, and the Olympic Mountains beyond Elliott Bay to the west. It's a city built on hills that have become unique neighborhoods. and ringed by picturesque towns and bustling cities like Edmonds and Muckleteo to the north, Federal Way, Kent and Renton to the south, Bellevue, Kirkland and Mercer Island east across the floating bridges, and Vashon Island, Bainbridge Island and Bremerton, a ferry boat ride to the west. And the center of it all is the Space Needle. This video tour begins at the heart of the city, on top of Seattle's landmark tower. From the observation deck of the Space Needle, get a panoramic view of Washington State's Emerald City, Seattle. The Space Needle features a unique tour guide called Compass Northwest. Use these illustrated maps as a giant travel brochure to acquaint yourself with directions and attractions before exploring Seattle. On a clear day, look for Mount Rainier, 80 miles to the southeast. Mount Baker, 110 miles to the northeast. These major peaks are part of the Cascade Range, which divides the state into two distinct temperate zones. Pacific storms moving east drop their rain on the west slopes, giving the Puget Sound Basin a milder, wetter climate than the eastern part of the state. In close view is Lake Union. The downtown skyline. West Seattle across Elliott Bay, and the Magnolia and Queen Anne neighborhoods. The Space Needle is known around the world as a Seattle landmark. Built in 1962 to symbolize the Space Age theme of the Seattle World's Fair, the Space Needle is located on the grounds of the Seattle Center. It took 13 months to build, from the pouring of the 30-foot deep foundation. To the assembly of triangular I-beam tubes which form the graceful legs of the 605-foot Space Needle. These are all the fairgrounds from the 1962 Seattle World's Fair. That's when the Space Needle was built. It took 400 days and four and a half million dollars to construct. Today, visitors take glass elevators to the Needle's observation deck and restaurant levels. 
Guests can enjoy Northwest cuisine and the view as the Emerald Suite and Space Needle Restaurant revolve a full circle every hour. Watch for the unique sunburst, halo, and pagoda roof of the Space Needle to pop into view as you tour the city. Before leaving the Seattle Center, join local residents who enjoy watching the International Fountain. Attend a play at the Bagley Wright Theater in the Performing Arts Center. Or visit the Pacific Science Center. Hundreds of school children and families include the IMAX Theater, exhibit areas, and planetarium in their Seattle tour plans. Children from toddlers to teenagers will find a hands-on learning experience to enjoy at the Pacific Science Center. Another World's Fair attraction which continues to serve the Seattle visitor is the monorail. Trains travel from the center station to the downtown Westlake Center in just 90 seconds. Make this trip the first leg in a riding, walking circle of the city. This unique excursion can include Metro's ride-free zone downtown bus routes the waterfront streetcar, horse-drawn carriages, and pedicabs, as well as the monorail. The ride to Westlake Center puts the traveler in the hub of downtown shopping. The four levels of the center feature more than 80 shops. And Pacific Picnic's Food Center, Nordstrom and the Bon Marche department stores are all adjacent to the Westlake Center. A full range of shopping experiences awaits the visitor who browses the shops along Fifth Avenue to the Pacific First Center. On to Rainier Square. and back along 4th Avenue to Century Square. To explore the site of Seattle's early retail center, use the underground Westlake Bus Tunnel Station or hop a surface street metro bus and ride free to Pioneer Square at Yesler Avenue. It was the timber and Henry Yesler's sawmill that got the outpost of Seattle going. The little town grew with lumber, fishing, and trade providing the basis for the economy. Seattle continued to grow until 1889, when fire destroyed the 64-acre town. The spirit of the city, however, was not destroyed. Join the famous underground tour and recapture some of that pioneer spirit of Seattle. So all this level, all this um, area of Pioneer Square was completely burnt to the ground, and the way they rebuilt after the fire is what created the underground. Okay, we're gonna go underground now here. The first time as you come to the doorway, let me see your hand stamps, please. And anyone wearing open-toed shoes of any kind, let me ask you to stay in the middle of the group. We call those rat or d'oeuvre trays. closer to the windows so you're taking a look through that window back there and you'll 
Another key to the 1890s rebuilding of Pioneer Square can be found at the Klondike Gold Rush National Park. Drop by to see how the arrival of the steamship Portland at Elliott Bay changed Seattle forever. Many of the 1900 stone and brick buildings which were constructed with Gold Rush money after the fire have been restored and house offices, galleries, shops, cafes, and residences in the Pioneer Square Historic District. Down Occidental Avenue to the southern border of the square is the King Dome, the National Football League Seahawks, American League Mariners baseball team, and other major events use this stadium which prides itself in having the world's largest self-supporting concrete roof. Visitors can take a behind-the-scenes tour of the King Dome, which includes a stop at the Royal Brougham Sports Museum. Up Jackson to 7th South is Seattle's International District. Many Asian cultures come together here to provide the visitor with a multi-ethnic experience. Plan a meal at one of the district's restaurants. Browse the shops or drop by Wajamaya, the Japanese department store. featuring produce and seafood you won't see in your local supermarket. The Metro International District Station bus will take the visitor back uptown or catch the historic Waterfront Streetcar on Fifth Avenue for a ride to waterfront attractions along Alaskan Way. Leave the trolley at the clamshell station to visit the waterfront. Seattle's history is tied to its natural harbor. Elliott Bay was explored and named for a member of the Vancouver Expedition into Puget Sound in 1792. The Arthur Denny party arrived in November of 1851 and settled at Alki Point. The next spring, Denny, Bell, and Boren staked claims across the bay on the eastern shore after experiencing the storms of the first winter. They named the new town for the friendly Duwamish Indian chief, Selt. Over the years, it became Seattle. The waterfront piers date back to the days when Seattle's natural deep water harbor was a favorite port of call for ships carrying cargoes of lumber and produce to coastal ports like San Francisco. As the working waterfront moved to Harbor Island, these finger piers have been developed into shops, restaurants, parks, and the terminus for excursion boats. At Pier 52, Washington State Ferries operate boats which cross the bay to Bainbridge Island or Bremerton. A super ferry boat ride gives the visitor a super viewpoint of the Seattle skyline from the deck. Harbor tours operate the Good Times fleet from Pier 56. The tour boat Good Time 3 makes an eight mile loop of Elliott Bay, that's the harbor of Seattle. Embark here for a tour of the Port of Seattle and other major facilities on Elliott Bay. Our main trading partner is Japan. Japan accounts for about 52% of the containers that come in through Seattle. 
ship this size will carry about 700 containers. If you could stretch those out end to end, they'd make a train roughly seven miles long. Next to the Sacramento is the biggest dry dock in Seattle, the Emerald Sea, the second largest on the west coast. As we pass Alki Point, we'll be crossing the main body of Puget Sound. Boats also cruise to Tillicum Village at Blake Island Marine State Park for a Northwest Coast Indian-style alder bake salmon dinner. A cup of hot steamer clams welcomes the visitor to the island's village of Native American culture. Enter the carved doors of a longhouse and gather for an authentic baked salmon dinner. She's gonna eat all that. Yeah, yeah. After the meal, a program of Northwest Coast Native song and dance is presented. While visiting the island, watch a local carver. or stroll the beach before departing for Seattle. Other boats sailing from the waterfront take vacationers on day excursions on Puget Sound or to Victoria, British Columbia in Canada. The waterfront along Alaskan Way is a fun area to explore day or night. Browse the shops, explore the attractions, dine at a seafood restaurant, or pick up fish and chips to enjoy while watching harbor traffic. Stop at the Waterfront Park, the Omnidome Theater, or the nationally acclaimed Seattle Aquarium. Puget Sound Marine Life swim around the spectators in this underwater dome. Visit a Pacific coral reef. Watch sea otters and fur seals enjoy the sun and dart to the bottom of the tank. When your waterfront tour is complete, use the hill climb to the historic Pike Place Market. This is a real working bustling market where Seattle residents shop the high stalls for fresh produce. The fish markets for the best prices on salmon, Dungeness crab, or oysters. Two separate orders up here, boys. And the day stalls for local produce and crafts. Seattle is mad for espresso, so drop into one of the market shops for a latte to go with a fresh baked market sweet roll. Allow time to experience the Pike Place Market. It's a unique Seattle event. Now that you've explored the center of Seattle, it's time to branch out to some of those neighborhoods that look inviting on the Space Needle Compass Northwest display. Touring to the Northwest is the Magnolia neighborhood with its lovely vistas of downtown and Mount Rainier. At the northwest corner of Magnolia Bluff is Discovery Park, 400 acres of woodlands, beaches, and views of Puget Sound. Just over the hill from Discovery Park, a most unusual experience awaits the visitor. The Hiram Chittenden locks lift vessels from the salt water of Puget Sound.
to the freshwater of the Lake Washington Ship Canal. Puget Sound tides can vary as much as 26 feet a day, requiring a lock to compensate for the difference in the levels of the two bodies of water. The locks are kept busy with commercial and recreational vessels year-round. Boat and people watching can be great on a summer weekend. On the edge of the locks is a 21-level fish ladder, which allows migrating salmon to travel from the salt water to spawning grounds along streams which feed Lake Washington. To the east of the locks on Salmon Bay is Seattle's Fisherman's Terminal. Many vessels of the fleet dock here between runs to the Puget Sound or Alaska fishing grounds. See the boat crews in action. Visit the Fisherman's Memorial. Or try a seafood restaurant. The opening day of boating season is an exciting time to be in Seattle, known as the boating capital of the United States. A vantage point along the Lake Washington Ship Canal will show you why. North on Finney Ridge is Woodland Park Zoo, a must-see for families. This nationally acclaimed zoo is a great place to learn how animals live in the wild. Look for elephants enjoying themselves in an Asian tropical forest pond. These Asian elephants are very much endangered. We only have about 35,000 left on the planet. So it's extremely fortunate that we were able to receive them. The gorilla is savoring a bit of lunch in a jungle-like home. And giraffes and zebras stretching their legs in the African savanna. Just about every animal you'll want to see is found in a habitat created to make all the creatures feel at home. Beyond the Woodland Park Zoo is Green Lake, a mecca for joggers, bikers, walkers, and skaters. Surrounded by a city neighborhood, families enjoy the open spaces, playground, and water sports at Green Lake. Lake Union is another favorite recreation spot for Seattle residents. Here, the focus is sailing and cruising. Lakeshore restaurants have docks for boat moorage while dining. The north end of the lake can resemble a freeway as boats of all types make their way from the locks through the ship canal and into Lake Washington. The 18 and a half mile lake stretches from Lake Forest Park and Kenmore to the north to Renton in the south. The western shore is lined with parks, boulevards, Seattle neighborhoods and lovely homes with lake and Cascade Mountain views. Also on the shores of Lake Washington at Union Bay is the University of Washington a major research institution with an enrollment of over 35,000. The university began downtown in 1861. After the Alaska-Yukon Pacific Exposition in 1909, the university took over the Lake Washington site. The campus was developed around the core buildings from the exposition. A full range of academic disciplines are offered at the UW, a nationally recognized institution of higher education. In the fall, an exciting Saturday afternoon attraction is a University of Washington Husky football game. Across the Montlake Bridge from the University is the Museum of History and Industry. Put Seattle's history in perspective. Walk through Seattle's Main Street of 1880. Visit the parlor of a lumber baron or other museum exhibits. To add to its natural beauty, Seattle is a city of wonderful gardens and forests. The Washington Park Arboretum is connected to the museum by a nature trail across Foster Island. A 
walk through the Arboretum to see the spring flowering azaleas, dogwoods, and rhododendrons is a true Northwest experience. Flower lovers will also want to visit the Arboretum's authentic Japanese gardens. The Summer Rose Garden at Woodland Park. The Fuchsia Garden at the Locks. And the Olmsted Design 1912 Glass Conservatory of Tropical Plants at Volunteer Park on Capitol Hill. Fairs and festivals dot the Seattle calendar each year, but it's Seafair that gets the most attention for three weeks each summer. Neighborhoods come together to choose royalty representatives and host events like parades, salmon barbecues, and races. Seafair is capped off with a torchlight parade downtown. And unlimited hydroplane boat races on Lake Washington. Drive across Lake Washington on the Evergreen Floating Bridge to visit east side cities like Kirkland, Redmond, and Bellevue. A second floating bridge takes the traveler on I-90 across Lake Washington to residential communities like Mercer Island. Shopping at Issaquah's Gilman Village. And a visitor's favorite, spectacular Snoqualmie Falls. Back on I-90, the visitor can travel through the Cascade Mountains at Snoqualmie Pass. This winter ski area is just 50 miles from downtown Seattle. Summer visitors will find hiking trails, campsites, whitewater river rafting, and fishing streams here in the Snoqualmie National Forest. The southern border of the National Forest joins Mount Rainier National Park. Mount Rainier is the continental United States' highest peak at 14,410 feet. A day trip by tour bus or car to this glacial and volcanic wonderland provides a wilderness experience within 100 miles of Seattle. Seattle is Boeing country. Learn more about Boeing with a visit to the tour center at the 747 assembly plant in Everett or plan a stop at the Museum of Flight at Boeing Field. The Great Gallery puts the visitor in the middle of aviation history, with 20 full-size planes flying overhead and many more waiting for a closer look at eye level. Tour the historic Red Barn, the 1916 home of the original Boeing Airplane Company. As the closest major U.S. city to the Orient, SeaTac Airport serves Asian countries as well as European destinations over the pole. West of SeaTac on the shores of Puget Sound, residential communities like Burien, Normandy Park, and Three Tree Point overlook marine views of boaters, Vashon Island, and the Olympics. This circle through neighboring communities brings the visitor back to Seattle and the Space Needle for a final 360-degree view from the observation deck. A skyline filled with dramatic man-made and natural beauty. It all blends together in Washington State's Emerald City, Seattle.
Other video tours offered by Hats Off Productions include Washington State, a scenic tour, Emerald City, Seattle, the San Juan Islands, the Cascade Loop, the Olympic Peninsula, Bavarian Village, Leavenworth, the Long Beach Peninsula. Order these travel videos by calling 1-800-458-5335.